Hi, Pete from Project Heaven again. We're back in the engine room. We're doing a, a quick video on camshaft terminology so you can make a more informed choice when choosing a new camshaft. Okay, so when choosing a camshaft, there's a few things that you need to look at mainly. The main, the main three things really are duration, maximum valve lift, and lobe separation. Okay, so first of all, duration. Duration is how long the valve is open for. The confusing thing about duration is it's actually done off of the crankshaft degrees, not the camshaft degrees. And of course the crankshaft twins spins twice as fast as the camshaft. For an inlet valve say, the duration on the inlet valve might be 300 degrees of crankshaft rotation. The other confusing thing about uh, duration is it only starts to be recorded from at the point at which the valve opens and your tappet clearance has a part to play in that. So I'll just draw a quick demonstration of that. So say we're working on a solid lifter engine and you've got your cam lobe, something like this, center point there, and you'll have a tappet clearance in here of around, say, I don't know, 20 thou. Now, that means that as this cam starts to rotate, it's not gonna start acting on the valve gear until it's taken up this 20 thou slack. That's quite important to note. So, cause you might think that, oh, it acts as soon as, as, soon as it starts to hit the ramp, it, it's, that's the way the duration is measured from. It's not measured from there, it's measured from the point at which the valve actually starts to open. So a good way to measure this might be on a fully assembled engine with the tappet clearances already in it. So duration, you might think that the more duration the better and certainly for a race application that's pretty true you want to have as much duration as possible the longer the inlet valve is open the more air fuel mixture you're getting into the engine the longer the exhaust valve is open the more exhaust gases you're getting out of the engine there is of course a physical limit because there'll be a point at which you need to stop exhausting gas and start inletting fuel and air mix for example uh, and if you have too much overlap there at lower RPM, they'll, it'll be very inefficient. But in a racing application, it doesn't matter what's going on at lower RPM, it's all about high RPM, so that's fine. You can have plenty of valve overlap. But in a road going application, you want to be efficient. You don't want to be wasting fuel and air mix down your exhaust. So you wouldn't have, you'd have quite a minimal valve overlap. So max lift, that wants to be, again, in a racing application, as high as you can possibly do it to get as much air fuel mix in uh, during your intake stroke and as much exhaust gas out during your exhaust stroke. But of course, again, there's a physical limit as to what the cam can do. There'll be a point at which the cam lobe might actually interfere with the cylinder head. There'll be points at which the valves will start to touch the pistons. So, uh, and also that you'll have quite extreme loads on the valve train because you'll have to have very high uh, spring pressures to be able to bring the valve shut again uh, so they don't cause a thing called valve float. Next thing to talk about is lobe separation. This is the point of max lift on the inlet versus the point of max lift on the exhaust and the angle in between them. If you have quite a tight angle, you'll get a lot of valve overlap. If you have a wide angle, you won't get much valve overlap. So again, for a racing application, you might have a tight angle to give you more valve overlap. And for a road going application, you might have a wider angle. Okay, so let's look at some real world examples of what the camshafts and their lobes actually look like. I've got a whole bunch of examples here. I'll start off with these cams, which are all the same cam out of the same engine, it's a V6. Start off with the road cam. So the road cam we see here, you'll be able to see has quite a uh, low duration, low lift, with a wide lobe separation. The center point of the max lift on this lobe versus the center point of the max lift on this lobe is our lobe separation angle. The shape of this ramp here, if it's quite a sort of a, a fat ramp, that would give us a, a high duration, but this being reasonably shallow is a sort of a um, low duration cam. And the difference in diameter from measuring from the top of this to the back of the cam versus the diameter from this side to this side gives us the lift, the cam lift. You then, if, if it's a rocker engine, if it's got rockers, then you'd need to multiply this cam lift by the rocker ratio. For this engine, it's 1.47 to one. So for this engine, this lift is actually 5.9 millimeter 
cam lift, but actual lift it works out to be 8.67, so a standard row cam. Next camshaft we've got here is a fast road rally sort of spec camshaft. It's got a reasonably high lift, it's got a reasonably high duration, and it's got a reasonably narrow lobe separation. This, the lobe separation again from this point to this point, we can see the duration is, would be different. And if we measured from here to here versus here to here, we'll get the max lift again. The max lift on cam lift on this one is 7.8 millimeters, which equates to 11.47 of actual lift. This, if you look at this camshaft, it may look a little different from the other one. That's because this is actually a reprofiled standard road cam. So this is a road cam that's been sent off and it's been machined with the different profile of uh, cam lobe on it. And the last camshaft we'll talk about is a full out race camshaft. It's got a very high lift, very uh, long duration and a na very narrow lobe separation. Again, we can see that our uh, lobe separation between this and this lobe. You can see the duration on the ramp here and see the variation from the road cam. And we can see a very high lift on this one. So the actual measured uh, cam lift is 8.6 mil, which equates to 12.64 millimeters, which is getting quite up there. You know, you're sort of towards half an inch of valve lift, which is pretty much the limit. You'll also notice that this cam's actually suffered a failure, unfortunately. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of the terminology of camshafts. One final thing to say is that when you're choosing a camshaft, for especially for like a race application, you might be tempted to go completely wild and go for very high lift, you know, loads of duration, loads of valve overlap. That may not be the best thing because if you've built an engine that can't actually achieve that RPM because of another reason, say restrictive exhaust system or poorly designed uh, cylinder head, thing like that, then if you go and put a load of valve overlap in, for example, and it can't reach the RPM it requires to be efficient, say 8,000 RPM, something like that, uh, your engine can only achieve 6,000 RPM, then you don't want an, a, a camshaft with those characteristics. You're going to have to choose something with less overlap, for example. So like, be careful still when you're choosing. Make sure you match it to what engine you've designed. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it was informative. Any further questions, just message us in the comments below.